We dubbed it the biggest tag match in WrestleMania history, and we have just finished the main event of the show. I think we are beating the press conference right now. Welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. I'm your host, Conrad Cushman, being joined by the man in gray. He hopes you're having a good day. The one, the only, the man they call Derek. Yo, yo, yo. Also joining me tonight, he is the man in black. He is not wearing a hat. It is Sean Hubbard of Hubbard Wrestling Weekly, my co-host for Clash of the Podcast, every single Monday, 6.05 Eastern Standard Time. Derek is also my host for AEW Dynamite Reviews every single Wednesday on the channel. We are not biased. We do not want to hear any of your tribalism tonight. We are talking WrestleMania. It's a big week for the wrestling world. Sean, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. This is not this is not my show. This is y'all's and Derek's show. I know there's a brotherhood here, but I am very humble and appreciative to be here tonight. Let's boogie. Listen, we're going to get into it. We're going to be talking night one of WrestleMania. I want everyone's thoughts. I think you're going to have some interesting ones. I think we're going to agree on some. I think we're going to have some differences on some. We're going to have a different outlook on some because some of the stuff, I don't know where they're going with it, right. but I'm interested to see. Um, with all that that is happening and doing it, um, normally everyone's like, oh, you're going to play the EPW intro and all that. No, no, no. Tonight you're going to get a preview for Clash of the Podcast. Sean's on this. We're going to use the Clash of the Podcast intro tonight. Sean, there's only one thing left to tell me, though, bro. Wow, I'm humbled and I'm honored. Conrad and my, my guy Derek, please drop that thing. Listen, man, when we link up, we get together. I felt like this was a clash of the podcast. You're going to get that for both nights of this WrestleMania review. And on Monday, me and Sean are probably going to run down all this stuff and the, all the weekend happenings again. Uh, we'll be planning a show for that. Thank you guys, man, for being up That's in sure. here. Um, we're going to get into the chat. If you guys haven't, share this. Um, I see a bunch of people are watching, I'm sure, in a bunch of different places. Please hop on, share this. Twitter people, come on over to YouTube, subscribe to myself, Hubbard Wrestling Weekly as well. All that's going to be down in the – it's going to be in the chat box, in the description, everywhere you guys can find it. Hitting that like button helps immensely, helps a lot of people find us. And these videos for WrestleMania I usually put at the top of the YouTube page. So if someone's like, what do these guys do? What are they all about? That's what you see. So check us out. Um, first one in here, big shout out to Mike. What's good, Mike? He said fire. I don't know if that was for one of the matches or what. This came in a little before. Lego, I saw your comment before. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you thought as well. Terrell in the house, Terrell317. What's good? Renegade L2K from the Pro Wrestling Shoot. What's good? Big shout out to James and Jesse. Always got to show them some love. Yes, sir. Cannot wait. Dougie Fresh in the house. What's good, Doug? Got to give him. Got to give Sean the props, man. The uh, the Dougie is always the best. Um, Matt Lopez, aka M Leezy Fo Sheezy. What up, Doug? What good evening. Good? Hello. Good evening. Hope everyone had a good Saturday. Same to you, M Leezy. Appreciate it. Quills, what's good? He said, what's going on, Conrad, Sean, Derek, chat. Your boy, Sir Quills, is here for WrestleMania Night 1 review. Let's get to the chopping this fable. Sir Quilly. Quilly. Let's see here. I'm just trying to read through. John G. Showing love to everybody. Uh, Conrad, Derek, and Sean. What's good, John? Clown in the house says, evening, everyone. K13Z. Let's see here. I'm jumping. I'm jumping. We have people talking. Cray in the house as well. What's good? They were cold tonight. Oh, man. We're going to get into all of this, Cray. I promise you guys put your thoughts in there. It's It, it was interesting, man. It's interesting tonight. Makes me sick. <sighs> <laughs> WrestleMania, two-night experience, man. Um, I say let's waste no time. I didn't. Did, did you, anybody watch the pre-show? Stand and Deliver was uh, fun from what I caught. I watched it in pieces, and I like saw like a match here, a match there. 
went back and when I came home today, uh, I was at Paw Patrol Live. If anyone cares, we could do a review of that if you want as well. Uh, amazing though. Uh, intern had no clue we were going to it. Face lit up. Good moment. I was happy. I did my part for today. I think good I earned you, to chill out today to good watch. You. You're, you're a good father. I saw that on your grand man. Very nice. Yes, sir. We're going into this. Anything about the pre-show you guys noticed, wanted to talk about? Minus CM Punk making me laugh saying, you guys know I've never seen Rocky, right? What are you talking about? Yeah. Same thing with the – it was part of the AEW drama, but I laughed. I laughed. Yeah, not, nothing of nothing of note. Um, it was a couple – I like I like the backstage, you know, outside the Bloodline locker room, outside of Seth Rollins' locker room, but nothing, nothing of significance. No, nothing I need to go and start watching, right? No. Um, the first thing I want to say that I noticed tonight was the new intro. Yeah. Sean, how did you feel about that? Did it feel like a new era to you? I know people are using the term renaissance era. Chat, same question. Well, I mean, um, we coined the word, the term renaissance era on Clash of the Podcast. So that's our baby. So anybody uses that, I don't want to put mm-hmm. it in the face. Cody, Cody owns it. Chill, chill, chill. <laughs> Cody oh. trademarked it. Crazy yeah. enough. Whatever. Anyway, like I said, I'm I'm claiming it for us. The three of us hold that. But anyway, I'm just I'm all all uh, levity aside. Um, I think the term Triple H era is a joke. Um, but the intro was cool. The intro. Was they were cool. they were pushing it. The intro gave me some like MCU vibes. I you did you see it, Derek? I I saw like bits and pieces. Yeah, it's like a uh, I don't know. I got MCU vibes of it. What's good, Rob? Rob, we appreciate you, man. That's very Rob- kind. Rob, Rob, Rob's downstairs from the studio. I'm not even. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah, no, he's just chilling right now. Um, let me see if I missed anything else going on. This Michael Cole welcomes us to WrestleMania. We get the intro with Meek Mill. Great. Tremendous job, tremendous job out of Coco Jones. Yeah, Coco Jones does the national anthem. Uh, I had to ask people who Coco Jones was because I wasn't familiar with any of like her previous work, but apparently I've been missing out. So. Well, hey, she's she's one of uh, you two are music guys. She's one of those like she doesn't really have a lot of music, but she has a lot of music. You know what I'm saying? A lot of features, a lot of videos, not too many albums. She she's supposed to be the next big thing. Right, right. Uh Doug is saying he liked the new beginning. Vinny in the house was good, Vinny. Hey, the guys. only Vinny, the only Vinny we like. Vinny, Vinny Beach. <laughs> That's Derek's name for you, Vinny Vinny Vici, and the only Vinny I, I prefer the only Vinny I like. <laughs> we gonna keep that one. That's a stack. Rockstar has joined us. Show me it's really a new era. M. Lizzy agrees with uh, Sean. Beautiful job by Coco Jones. Uh, Cody getting booed was funny. Uh, we're gonna Vinny. We're gonna revisit that because S- Sean mentioned that to me. And I was trying to tell you, bro. No, but I, I think I got up during that entrance. I missed part of his entrance. But during the match too, bro. Oh, during the match too, Derek. Did you? you well, we'll let, wait, let's we'll we'll save Ooh. it for when we get into it. Man, Triple H comes out first and welcomes us to WrestleMania. I did see some some saltiness, like this guy's gonna get the first pop of the night. <laughs> but it's trip. I get why they're trying to do this. Triple H's new era. He's gonna right. welcome us. I was okay with right. it. Yeah, it, it, you gotta keep it a, a, a stack, bro. It's his it's his time now, so you gotta let him. It's run. my time. Sorry. Man, stay, stay, stay your punk behind backstage. Nobody needs to see you. You're you're not you're not a performer anymore. It's like Shawn Michaels. As much as I love Shawn Michaels, like Shawn Michaels getting pyro when he's a special referee. Just stand in the corner, wave to the fans, and get out of the way. Triple H did not need an entrance tonight. It was ridiculous. You all um, de- no, no pyro. <laughs> yeah, no cap. I'm not even capping right now. Like so I was like, what is he doing? Like, shut up. Listen. Let's get into the intro. So as Sean and I had talked about, they they did go with the first ever women's opener, Rhea Ripley, Becky Lynch. Um, I'm kicking it to Sean first on this. Sean, your your thoughts on this match? I mean, I have little things written down here, but we can get into whatever. And and there's grades for this. We're gonna try to grade this at the end. I don't know what agreement we're all gonna come to on this, but it'll be it'll be interesting. Um, well, certainly not going to be an A for me, but anyway, we'll get to that later. Um, Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> I want to. I want to give a big shout out to Becky. I don't know what Becky Lynch's um, influence in the backstage area is, but I'm assuming after the work she's put in, first ever WrestleMania main event for a female, that she she has some kind of say in her creative direction. 
Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm just gonna assume that, and I'm gonna rock with that and say kudos to her for taking an L to Rhea Ripley. This is definitely even after being champion for a year, Rhea Ripley. This is the culmination and the blast off to the Rhea Ripley era uh, in in women's pro wrestling in WWE. She deserved the win. Becky winning tonight would have completely. I'm not going to say derailed Rhea Ripley, but the last year really wouldn't have meant anything as it relates to Rhea Ripley being the queen of the WWE women right now. Uh, But tonight, Becky Lynch losing the way she lost, clean in the center of the ring, no judgment day, which I think was exponentially important. I love it. Great match. Awesome job kicking out of a manhandle slam. Awesome job kicking out of a couple of rip ties. And then uh, Rhea Ripley with the victory. I thought that was a very, very over-the-top match. And and, and I mean that in the most uh, complimentary way. Derek, your girl, Rhea, I know you're probably the biggest fan out of the three of us. So what did you think? Red call? I honestly will say this is probably Rhea Ripley's best match in a minute. The weird thing with her is that you know who she'll have, like, the great match against, but they wait. Like, they're just waiting – Waiting and waiting. Um, as Sean coined the term, go get his shirt, snap famous. When we were talking about some of the people she's been facing, you're like, I like that you're giving people a chance, but you haven't mm-hmm. elevated these people enough for right. me to believe right. that something's right. going to happen here. Right. And Rhea's trying to carry matches. Listen, we saw her in the ring with uh, some people, and it was just like, oh, this is not good. But then when she gets in with Charlotte, Becky, whomever else that we know is on a high-quality caliber, that's where we're going. And uh, I'll play speculation guy. The match, I think the next match that they need to get to with her is going to be Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair. I, listen, I thought they were going to do that this year, but they didn't mm-hmm. go that way. So I'm thinking maybe for 41, if they go that long with her as champ or to SummerSlam, Bianca's got to get in that spotlight. And it's got to be those two in the match, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I, I think I think that, that that's a high, high profile match for the both of them they mm-hmm. both need that I, I don't think it's something that um bianca belair will take off of her right away but just the the uh just the back and forth tandem between those two i think that'd be awesome um quick point about that even though the draft really doesn't mean anything and, I, and i'm going somewhere very serious right now even though i know we joke around about that i think an indication of yours y'all both's prediction which, by the way, I agree with, will be um, solidified if and when Bianca gets drafted to Raw. Yeah. Yeah, I can see them splitting up the uh, the crew from tonight from the trios match or uh, six-woman tag. But we'll, we'll, we'll get into that uh, momentarily. And I'm just putting everybody's comments up. I see you guys are in here, man. I appreciate everybody who has uh, jumped in. Uh, the Samoan Watchmen, welcome, man. I see you said you're brand new here. Thank you, man, for checking us out. Make sure you check out Hubbard Wrestling Weekly as well. And like I said, we do a podcast together, me and Sean, on Mondays. Check us out, man. Welcome. I appreciate that. And if you guys get a chance, share us. Facebook, Twitter. I put it yes. on my personal Facebook tonight as well. So please make sure you guys share. Um, yeah, Rhea gets the win. I, I was happy with what they ended up doing here. Um, I, I really don't have anything else to add to this. Good on Rhea. We know that I think she's the star of the Judgment Day, so yeah, we did the right thing. Um, right. Rhea, Rhea is the Judgment Day, bro. Sorry, I listen. I don't think you're wrong at all by saying that. Truthfully, you're 100 right, Derek. 100 right. Um, and we're gonna see why in the next match. Let's talk this ladder match here real quick. Mm-hmm. I don't know who is a fan of this. I don't have a lot of notes on this because these matches are chaos. They get the same treatment as any other company that wants to do multi-man crazy matches. I'm not taking all these notes, y'all. So I'm just going to sit back and watch. Um, So let me say this. Me and Sean did predictions. We were on Sean's channel. Check it out. Mm -hmm. I was wrong about this one. Very, 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 very wrong. But my prediction was probably ludicrous to everybody else anyway. Um, I think the rest of you guys called this for the most part. Uh, I think maybe Derek got it wrong too, or at least one of the teams 50, wrong. 50. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm 50 50 as well. Yeah, 50. I'm gonna and, look- and almost and almost embarrassingly 50 50 because I think I don't know how Derek feels. I feel like we should have all given A Town down more consideration in this match, and none of us did. <laughs> I'm not even embarrassed about that. <laughs> 
Well, remember, <laughs> contrary reports said that they weren't even going to be in the match. Right, that's true. That's Shout true. out to Unc, uh, <laughs> Uncle Dave. Uh, he wrong, <laughs> wrong again. He got he got the match card right. He did 50 50. <laughs> well, yeah, right, right. <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess we have as much credibility as him, too. Sorry, Dave, he, he'll, he'll probably dog me for that or block me. I don't care. So, six pack ladder match challenge. In this, we had DIY, the new day, catch republic, awesome truth, a town down under. That name is still awful. They uh, announced them. They announced them as Theory and and Waller. So hopefully, maybe that stuff goes away. Yeah, I think that's just the name like the people give them, but yeah. no one else in the company has agreed to it. They're like, nah, right? Well, we'll get that out. Don't don't ever do that. Judgment Day was in this pure chaos in this. So A Town Down Under grabbed the SmackDown tag titles. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Sorry, bro. I, I wrote this already. I can't change it. A <laughs> Town Down Under grabbed the SmackDown tag titles. I'm going to save my rant for after. Does someone have a lot to say about this? Awesome Truth grabbed the other set of belts. I don't, I'm don't. i not. Dude, they did a hot tag in the match with R-Truth. What is this foolishness? Like, yeah. I get that R-Truth is going to get his bag. But some of the times I'm just like, bro, what? There comes a point, and, I, and I'm certainly not going to um, act as if this is my brainchild. This is something I actually heard on Wednesday night's Derek and Conrad on the AEW show, and somehow it went off into a WWE conversation. There comes a point where truth has to be at least, co- you know, somewhat cognizant of what's going on. Like him being a goofball is is starting to not be funny anymore. I'm happy he won, but like him being a goofy, you know, so and so. There comes a point where it's like, all right, come on, like. I mean, he was goofy in the match, so he did get a hot tag in the match, but then he knew enough to go up, and they let him be the one to have the moment. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, Miz, you you got to main event WrestleMania 27. Sit down. Quiet. All right? Just take that moment right off into the sunset. Yeah. Because I could argue a bunch of people back there who should have had it instead, but that's fine. Our truth got his moment. I'm happy for our truth Good. I, I fear in totality – what this is going to do for the tag division. I do not like splitting of the belts. I thought the belts were better united and moving forward with, we have the divisions on each show. I don't know how you guys felt about it, but I think this is bad news moving forward for the tag division. Uh, I don't agree with it either. Um, You shouldn't split those up, but regardless of that, (laughs) the awesome truth is horrible. Not awesome. <laughs> awesome. It, it is, first of all, you know how I feel about Miz alone. Just Miz alone. Miz looks like Doc from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all don't know, go look it up. I promise you. That is an awesome analogy. No pun intended. I promise you. Then we got our truth. I can't say what I really want to say, and it's killing me inside because I really want to say it, but for for Sean and for you, I will refrain from saying it. Hey, listen, listen, I know I'm family to you guys and vice versa, but technically I'm on EPW tonight. Derek's got contract rules to adhere to because Derek knows off. I let it by sometimes, but not tonight. (laughs) No, All right, fair enough, fair enough. I, I promise you, Sean, if you if you heard, <laughs> if you hear what I would have to say about our truth, okay. You, oh man, your ears, I got you. Your ears would be on fire, my guy. Okay, <laughs> on fire. I don't I don't like this. I don't like this tag team at all. A mm. town down under, stupid. Mm. Get rid of it. Let me say this: I do feel for theory in a way. Because and and this is why, from a business standpoint, this dude has went from how confused does this guy have to be? He used to be in a group with Johnny Gargano and NXT, so you're like, you're the backup man for this guy. True. Then you come up to the main roster, and then you're, they're like, yo, you're money in the bank. You're the next best thing. True. Stuff outside of your control happens. You cash in on the United States champion and lose. Right. <laughs> and now they're like, yeah, sorry, dude, we screwed you up pretty bad. Right. Yeah. And and now he's just in this spot. So right. and, and they made him a goofball, basically. Like 
to an extent. I mean, he was that too. And uh, with uh, what was it called? The way. Am I thinking? Yes. Right? Yes. The way was actually pretty entertaining in NXT. It, that to me that was the beginning of the downfall for Johnny Gargano, but okay, as far as the character, where yeah. I was like, mm, I don't care. So, but he was the better part of it though. Like I enjoyed his work in it. So cool for them. I th- I just don't think you have enough tag teams to split up your tag divisions. I don't care. Maybe maybe Triple H has plans. Maybe he's gonna call up a bunch of people from NXT. Then that's what he needs to do, and gotta make it ASAP. I'm just saying, me and Sean, I'll say this. We have held his feet to the fire on like podcast versions. I know you don't get to talk WWE as much, and I know you do too, but we will hold Triple H to this. Like That was a terrible decision at WrestleMania to do this. So, Absolutely. Um, for sure, man. What's good, man? Uh, can, can you do what Miz and R-Truth does? No, but I could damn sure write it better, brother. That's, I can say that yeah. for sure. Um, 100%. No, I'm, I'm certainly not as athletic as either one of those gentlemen, but you know what? I have a, I have a better pen than the people writing this material. Yes. Well, well, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna correct you on that. Uh, Bubs. I, I think all three of us are probably way more athletic than the Miz. <laughs> Our truth. Maybe not, maybe not, but the Miz. The Miz, maybe. maybe so you're right, brother. Yeah. I, I, now, now, I always say this about Miz. Miz busted his hump to get where he was at. Like, I remember when he first came in and how he was to where he is now. Leaps and bounds better. I'll never say anything bad about the Miz. But, um, yeah. Listen, and, it, 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 regardless of the fact, if we can't do what what the Miz and our truth do, I, listen, that's beyond the point. You really don't want to hear how I really feel about our truth alone. Yeah. That's not something you want to hear. So but this is about how you book characters, bro. Yes. Here's the problem. And now I'm about to go off a little bit. Not not really. Let me get on my soapbox for two seconds, gentlemen. Get up on your soapbox for 10 seconds. Why on earth? Pizza. No. <laughs> Why on earth would you book Miz the way that you do? Miz hasn't beat anybody. Anybody in the last like two, three years. And now you're like. Please believe all of a sudden that he's great and he's going to do this. And not only that, you tag him up with our truth. Like, bro, I don't have an issue with you doing that, but let them win. And then they th- did they get a couple wins? Sure. But what were they doing before this? Like, people think we have amnesia and we just forgot. Exactly. Our truth was the 24 7 champion. He lost like 40 times. Exactly. I, I remember this. This is goofy stuff. I just want you to make something coherent. I, some awesome people are good here. Awesome Truth was good. I'll give them credit. Awesome Truth was good one time in their careers. When they teamed in that little mini feud they had with Cena and Rock, that was good TV. But you know what the key part to that was? Our Truth got serious. And 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 Sean and Derek have heard me say, I can I told them what I would do with our truth. It would work. I guarantee it, bro. Like if I ever told you, like, I will bet money on something would work if I wrote it and I was like, here, do this. I bet you this will get them over. But will they do it? Not until he's probably ready to retire, if they even decide to. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> you know what that means. <laughs> not let's not do it. Um, M. Leezy put up a good thing in here as well. How about we get new tag title designs? I am 100% with it, but are we going to get the uh, the usual Probably. world yeah. heavyweight tag titles and WWE right. tag titles? Here, here's the issue, M. Leezy, um, and obviously Conrad and, and my guy Derek. The issue is this. I would have loved to see that, but now we're in a position where with the splitting of the belts, how likely are we going to to see – new belts like I would have thought if they kept the belts together which was Conrad's idea that they eventually would have come to the realization that those both sets of titles look terrible and let's make new belts but they're certainly I'd be dumbfounded if they made new belts for the Raw and Smackdown titles not if they're separated again I wouldn't be surprised if they have tag titles sitting in a vault somewhere just yeah. waiting to be used they like probably do. I've, I've been told there's a lot of belts that just never got used or brought up to TV but then again, um, then again, you never know. Like maybe they'll surprise us. Who knows? And uh, lineage of the belts might be crazy too, because who's the world champ and who's the WWE? You know what I mean? Right. They became Raw and SmackDown titles, so I don't know. Emily's he says, Mrs. Bookie's been all over the place. He's either on a long losing streak or doing a whole lot of nothing, and then making him be a threat to Gunther. Like, 
the blank. You know what I mean? I get it. I get it. I totally get it. I mean, one of the worst Survivor Series in history, The Miz challenging Gunther and Zoe Stark challenging Rhea Ripley. Yeah. No comment. Let's move into this tag match. Um, let's look at this with Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They must have heard me complaining. Wait, wait. Hold up. Wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished? <laughs> Yo, they must have heard me complain. Charlotte must have got on that phone and oh, said, you know she, did. Oh, she said, mm. Oh, you didn't know? Mm. My husband better be in a match with somebody. That's right. Let me stop. Andrade gets put into the match. If you are in the LWO, how are you not jumping Ray Mysterio at this point? Right. It's okay, Ray. Nah, get someone else. Don't pick me. Get someone else. I don't want the payday, bro. I just want to be in your corner, brother. You call the shots. You're Ray Mysterio. I'm just like, ah, why do we do this? Right. Um, Dragon Lee was taken out. There's speculation. Carlito did it. Yeah. <laughs> Backstabber. Can't wait for it to happen. What do you think, Sean, or do you just not care? I care because I care for all the wrong reasons. I care because it's another LWO, you pick me over me. Why, why, why did you pick him over me? We just did this a couple months back with Santos in the beginning. You know, when, when Carlito got brought in over, over Santos, now we're bringing in Dragon Lee over Carlito. And now, you know, Andrade over Carlito. It's stupid. Like, not only are they – like recycling storylines, they're recycling storylines with the same team. That's what I'm trying to say. I, I mean, WWE is uh, we're not exactly where we need to be, not yet. Not yet. Nah, you see that, you see that gas getting pumped up, and people yeah. be talking, and you be like, Hold on, y'all, yeah, like, realize? take it easy. Like, it's, it's a little better, but take it easy. Yeah, um. I don't know how I felt about this one. By the way, it was weird to see like all the matches like sponsored by different things. Yeah, it was yeah, different. Kind of nuts. Yeah, um, not used to it, but I'm okay with it because you know what, New Japan and all these other companies have it. But it's weird to see like dude wipes on the ring post. Yeah, prime yeah. in the middle of the ring, prime on the turnbuckle pads, and prime, that's fine. Prime in the corner by the, the yeah, a prime a prime hydration station. Like why? <laughs> Listen, branding matters. I guess. Shout out to Pro Wrestling Shoot. Putting their link in the chat real quick for him. James, don't ever tell Jesse we didn't do nothing for him while he was away. <laughs> um, Shout out to Jesse. Ray and Andrade get the win. They got some help from Travis Kelsey, uh, I think former NFL player. He's retired now, right? Yeah. Confirmed. A, and, a, very, uh, a, very beloved, a very beloved eagle. That actually was pretty good. I, I'm cool with that. He was a very beloved eagle. eagle uh, I'm sorry. Player. And I said uh, Travis Kelsey, Jason Kelsey. Yeah. No ta- there was no yeah. Taylor Swift for any of the Swifties out there. My bad. Yeah, but he – Um, I like that. That was actually a solid move, bringing in the eagles. That that actually makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, well, Ray was rocking it on the tights. I was like, can't go back to San Diego for a little bit, bro. There you go. Can't be going wearing that San Diego jersey after that. Nope, not after that. It made sense to me, though, once I saw the attire and then, oh, Lane Johnson and uh, Jason Kelsey were going to come out there to help. But they helped them get the win. Ray, best Dominic again. This has to be leading to a third match in the future. Am I wrong, gents? Like, you got to do this now. You're you're not wrong, but the point has been sabotaged because now Ray is up 2 0. Yeah. Right. I, I think I think the match that we all want to see is it's gonna be like career versus hair or mask versus hair or something. It has to be something of of importance. It has to be. But but to your guys' point, the problem is this, and I think we're all we're definitely, I don't think, I know we're all on the same page. Because it's 2-0. Dominic's the one that's going to be seeking retribution. So Ray can lay back and say, what do I have to gain by facing you again? I've already kicked your butt twice. True. Wait a minute. Crazy yelling at us. A lot of people don't know. It's, is it Jason Kels? Is that how you're supposed to say it? No, it's 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 Kelsey. It's not Kels. It's Kelsey. Yeah. That's, that's, what, what, that's what he that, – at least that's what he said. I mean – his brother pronounces it Kelsey. Yeah, that's what I always said. Um, yeah, man. Crazy, crazy, crazy. 
I, I really don't have a lot to say about this match. Like I said, this is a storyline that I feel like is never ending. Yeah, it's never going to end, and the same people are going to just keep turning on each other until we get to the point of all right, let's split these guys up. Right. Maybe so, that draft will help with it, right? I don't, I don't, I don't think it'll end until they uh, they decide to end uh, the Judgment Day. I think that's when it'll really culminate and say, all right, we're done with all this. Mountie. So, big shout out to Mountie. Mountie. I'm the Mountie. What's going on, brother? <laughs> um, James says he's surprised no bad bunny. He was there. Was he? Yeah, I thought that I thought he was gonna come out maybe in this match. I personally what I would have done was instead of eliminating people from Ray's side of things, this is the stuff that makes you have no like sympathy for Ray when he gets turned on or beat up. Like even with Batista, I laughed. Like I was like, Yeah, about time, big Dave. Right. Tell him stop dragging you in these tag matches and stuff. <laughs> So in this situation, why didn't you just have the LWO versus like Santos crew and he has a mystery partner and it's Dom? You would have done the exact same thing and accomplished the exact accomplished, same thing. Accomplished and no, I, I'm gonna disagree with you. I'm gonna say your point's even more valid than you think it is. It would have accomplished more. It would have been more of a pop and more of a booing and more effective. WWE is so oh my god, like I we can figure this stuff out, but yet people, you know something, this whole Triple H is like the savior thing. Like Paul Levesque, like I've said on The Clash many times, if the bar was here, okay, if the bar was down here and somebody goes here, that doesn't mean it's good. It just means it's better. Right. Agree. Facts. Um. Joey Janela Spring Break Night 2 getting ready to start. Jacob Fatu and Zilla versus uh, Violence is Forever and the Bollywood Boys. Let's go, clown. Bloodline is still in the building. Excuse me. That's right. Um, Sean, we've reached the point to uh, getting to the match that I think you were kind of looking most forward to. It's brother versus brother. Oos versus Oos. They had a really good video package for this. They did. did this a wonderful video, video package. Fun. Yeah, the, the, this video package was fire. My so my sister came over for those who don't know, and my sister and brother are twins. People don't know that my brother's been on the channel before, and I said she was trying to understand this, so she was over, and I was explaining to her like the matches and stuff. I'm like, so this is basically if you two were fighting, and I'm Roman Reigns, and she was just like, what? And I was just like, just work with me, you'll understand this by the end while you're watching this show, right. and. It was. I thought this was going to be so much more than it was. I feel like the, like the match let her down. It let us down. Yeah. And and I, I'm not trying to say that like oh bad Usos. I just don't think the chemistry was here tonight. I don't know. No. Were they trying to tell too much of a story? Were they like WWE fying this too much or like what happened here, guys? Where did this go, Sean? Let's go to Sean. Yeah. yeah this is Sean's ahead. moment. So where where did this go off the road, Sean? This is this is our moment, but I'll I'll kick it off. I think people know that I'm somewhat of a smidge of a Jay Uso fan. Maybe just a little, right? I'm very happy my guy won the match. But the match was not good. It wasn't. And, I, and I'm, I'm sad to say that. Um, Seth has had bangers with Roman Reigns. Excuse me. Seth has had bangers. Jay has had bangers with Roman Reigns. Jay has had, had, had bangers with Seth Rollins. Tonight was not a good match. Um... Jimmy and Jay are the greatest tag team of all time, arguably, without argument, top five ever. Their chemistry is unmatched as a team. Their chemistry is unmatched in vignettes. Their chemistry is unmatched as it relates to their on-camera chemistry. They did not wrestle an entertaining match tonight at WrestleMania. I was very underwhelmed. The only thing that I was happy about was hearing Jay Uso's music twice. Because at the end of the day, I'm a Jey Uso fan. But his chemistry with his brother was not that great. And the match uh, definitely reflected that. Yeah, um, I agree with that 100%. You know what? Looking at this match, I was thinking that we would get the same kind of feel of when uh, they they were uh, in a... Um, 
a mic battle pretty much with uh, Judgment Day and how they were running down every single team that they beat. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that's the same kind of energy that this match should have. Mm -hmm. To me, I felt like in, in this match, they told the story way too early. Meaning like, all right, you know, you got Jimmy going like, I'm sorry, you did that way too early. Like, I, it you shouldn't have done. Like, it should have it should have been an all out brawl. Like, f you and f you. Yeah. And boom, 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 and that's. But Derek, the issue is with that was Jay fell for this with Roman before. Yes, he did. So and, why and, 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 and and him falling for that again makes him look really silly. Right, but I'm okay. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with. I, I'm the. I, what I'm saying is, I think the energy level that they had when they were together should have trickled over into this match. And I you think, would you would think, Derek, you would think. Yeah, and I, and I think I think WWE took too much of that away from them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that that's why we got this match. Right, the match that we wanted that we did not get. Right, the match the match that I didn't want. And then got convinced that it might be a good thing. And then by the time bell time came around, I was excited. And then the match was mad. The match. I mean, I never thought Jimmy versus Jay would be like mediocre. It was. And whoever's decision. I, I mean, I know these matches are produced. Air quotes for people listening on audio. Produced by backstage producer. Whose idea was it for them to super kick each other for twenty minutes? I know if another set of brothers did this, it would be a problem. Just right, exactly, exactly. But like, I mean, of, I mean, I think it was no exaggeration. I know you guys know that I joke around a lot, but I'm dead serious when I say this. There was 20 super kicks, a spear, and a splash. Yeah, and a uh, uh, messed up Samoan drop. Oh yeah, he, he botched that as well. Yeah, I mean, I love the Usos. Uh, I don't know. It, was, it it wasn't. It didn't live up to expectations. I sometimes I feel like people don't want to fight. Terrell brought up all these matches in here. This is something Rob had brought up too. Brett versus Owen, Matt versus Jeff, Edge versus Christian, Cody versus Dustin. Edge versus Christian technically shouldn't count because they're not real brothers, though. Yeah, technically. I just want to put that in there. And Cody versus Dustin, that match was not good in. WWE really, but I loved it in AEW. It yeah. worked very well there. Mm -hmm. They told the story they wanted to tell, and they could bleed and do whatever. Brett versus Owen is a classic story, especially their match at WrestleMania 10. Matt and Jeff wasn't really good ever. Matt I mean, and Jeff, Matt and Jeff was saved at 25 because of the ladders and the chairs. Not even that though. Like it, it was okay, even. Mm -hmm. Even that match, I was just like, mm, do you really when you think of WrestleMania 25, are you like, remember that Matt and Jeff Hardy match? I'm like, nah. Okay. Sean, I'm it, gonna I'm gonna throw something at you. You too, Derek. The twist of fate on the chair with the head in between the chair. That was pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, that was how we won, right? Yeah. 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 That, that, that was but other than that, that's right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm like, okay. But look, right. he had to like remember this. <laughs> Right. Like, no, no <laughs> one spot in the match. Remember that twist of fate through the chair? <laughs> yeah, no, that 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 spot was good. But to me, thinking of thinking of brother versus brother, it it should have like you're at the point now where Jimmy cost you a title shot or a, a title win, two title wins, bro. Two times, yeah, man. Two times. There should be no talking. This should be like, I'm going to wax the floor with you right now. By the way, we forgot to mention Lil Wayne did come out with Jay Uso. He, I thought he said a new song, but he came out with like a Millie, and then he kind of just, you know, remixed Jay Uso's song. Like, just me. It's right. just me. It's just you. It's just us. <laughs> and I was just like, all right, Wayne, you 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 got your money, bro. Yeah. I could have I could have done without that, but you know it's nice yeah. that they gave Jay. Yeah, I think I think it made him feel bigger level to the people who oh, don't sure. watch wrestling every week. Sure. So that listen, I we well, we're I, gonna but as we go down the tiers of the card uh, later on in this show, we're gonna see that perhaps Jay Uso, well not perhaps that Jay Uso certainly is not respected as other people who get title shots and win at WrestleMania when Jay can't even. I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> I'm with Matt. I think uh, do I think Jay and Jimmy are done though after this? No, I think they're fine. Even if they keep them separate for a little while, 
I think that Jay is going to be doing just fine. This is the issue with Jay. And I'm going to speak on Sean's behalf a little bit. This is the issue. You put Jay in these situations. He beats important people, but then never does it on the big one. And this is why people's perception of Jay is hurt. It's not this match. This match you could have a bad match with your brother at WrestleMania. I'm not going to say it's the end of the world. Yeah. He might come out on Monday and you put him in a match with Seth Rollins. Boom, boom, banger again. Hey, mm-hmm. what do you know? Bob's your uncle and everybody's dancing and doing the arms. Right. That's fine. That could happen. I just think him and his brother don't have the chemistry for this. They are better as a tag team. They're one of the best tag teams that you have. We talk, New Day was in that match before we barely mentioned them. New Day is were one of the best tag teams that you had. Those were your two top teams. I don't care what anybody says. Yes. You can say the tag division wasn't that great. That's fine. But they were carrying your tag division for years and years and years and years. And you could put those guys up against anyone, and it was going to be good. Yes, sir. Even, even in the sloppy era. When they <laughs> Who's were... sloppy era? Those are. Oh, here he goes. We're moving on, wait, folks. Wait, wait, wait. Even in the sloppy era when they wrestled Harper and Rowan, you felt that 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 best two out of three, like yo, that was fire. Uh-huh. They had a good two out of three with Roman and Seth too when they were in the Shield. Like, uh-huh. come on, dude. Like, this was your opportunity to say, all right, listen. For years we kept you two together. Now you have this opportunity to be by yourselves and put your name on the table. Make it happen. You got the opportunity. Make it happen. Do you, let, let me ask you both this. We're going to go around, then we'll move on from this. Do you give them another chance at this? Because this could have been the first time they locked up one-on-one, though, in a ring. They probably didn't want to give it away on a house show or anything. First time you locked up, eh, it didn't work out. Let's try it again. I'm going to respond to you very respectfully. I'm, I'm leading with the word respectfully because it's going to sound very condescending, but you know me better than that. I didn't want it the first time. I agree. I'm just saying if you're oh, so, the- so to answer your question, no, absolutely not. I don't think these guys should ever share a ring as opponents ever again, ever, unless it's on a Survivor Series team. And we know WWE's ruined the Survivor Series, so that'll never happen either. I I will give them a second go around. Oh I wow! Okay, them, I'll give them a second go around just because I feel like the way that this match was constructed wasn't constructed by them. Mm-hmm. I feel like they're... I think they try to do too much of the WWE storytelling. I'm your brother. Please don't hurt me. I'm your brother versus... Yo, let them two just go out there. Yo, go do what you do. Because at the end of the day, if if, if two brothers in real life have an issue with each other, it's like, you know what? Come on, bro. I'm about to knock you out right now. I'm done with you. Do you know how a storyline like this was told perfectly? I'm going to take you guys back. It wasn't brother versus brother, but it was best friend versus best friend. HBK and Diesel in 95. They they did that masterfully. They fought like dogs, and with the exception of a botched powerbomb, it was a great match. And then a couple weeks later, they were like, you know what? Fighting made us closer. Realized we shouldn't have been fighting in the first place. We're really best friends. Let's go out win the tag titles. Yes. And then they took it away from them. Right. <laughs> right. But, yeah, Jimmy and Jay was a disappointment, and I'm sad to say that because I love the Usos. Yeah. It, it, I, like I said, I would give them a second go around, but they have to have control. I'm, I'm leading with Derek. I would be willing to give them another chance, but they have to, uh, they have to change up what they're, what they're trying to accomplish here. Yeah. And maybe that's what they thought. Like Sean said, fourth match on the card. Uh, we got more time with this. You guys really yeah. don't need to tell your whole thing right now. Okay. Right. Right. So, uh, Juke, what's good, man? I see you in the chat as well, bro. Juke, what's good, bro? Uh, <laughs> wait, a reporter booed, booed Roman and got kicked out by Roman? <laughs> that's great. Uh, <laughs> I hope it wasn't my boy, Reg. Uh <laughs> Wow. Okay. People are telling us what's being said. Drew just said tomorrow's going to be an easy payday for him. Drew's talking that schmack, huh? Okay. Okay. Uh, Damage control versus Jay Cargill, Naomi, and Bianca Belair. Derek, I'm coming to you first, bro. Um, I'm happy to see what they've done with this match. Um, you have you have three women in Jade, Bianca. And um, Naomi, Naomi. Oh my god, I'm always drawing a blank for her. Um, to bring them together 
on this kind of platform on this big of a stage is nothing short of amazing. Absolutely. Um, I'm sure you guys would agree. Absolutely. Um, to have them wrestle against damage control, it's it's a that that's your dominant faction right now for for the women. Right. And um, th- this is your showcase to bring up your next superstars of women. Because like, let's face it, Oscar's up in age. She she's probably going to start getting a limited role. Uh, Kyrie Zane. She she's immaculate, but we don't know how long her run is gonna go. Right, Dakota Kai unproven. D- yeah, Dakota Kai unproven. So, just for the fact of you have this kind of match with these three women, loved it. As the match is concerned, or uh, concerning the match, underwhelming to me. It was very underwhelming. I'm going to tell you guys something that's probably going to blow your minds, literally blow your minds. Match of the, excuse me, moment of the night for me, outside of the main event, like main event stood on its own. But outside the main event, that match with the six women was had a moment of the night for me. To watching the entire show, there was only one moment outside of the main event where I was like, woo, literally, woo. And that's when Jade, excuse me, Bianca hit Oscar with the braid. Oh yeah. Oh. That yeah. was like that to me, that's a moment of the night contender. Yeah. I agree with you. The match was subpar for the most part, but ironically, that's how wrestling works, right? Ironically, that match that was kind of like iffy had a moment of the night candidate. So it's weird how these things work out. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Terrell brings up a good point. A storm is coming with Jade getting the pinfall for her team. Uh, I have no issue with this. This was booked perfectly in my mind. I know it wasn't like the big like, oh man, this match is great, but it did what it was supposed to do. Yeah, Jade is established. Naomi is back. She is winning. And then you also have Bianca Belair is still a force, and the streak continues with Bianca. I'm, I'm going to make this a thing now. Bianca Belair has a streak. Let this rock. Let Bianca Belair happen. does not have a streak. What do you mean she doesn't have a streak? She doesn't have a streak. Not according to the record books. Why has she lost something? Don't tell me some battle royal, please. I'm not saying I'm happy about it. To me, in my heart, she's four and zero. Oh, but I looked it up, and a lot of websites are listing her as four and one. What is she? What does she lose? The right? women, the women's battle royal. What I'm year? Not happy, I'm not happy about it. At 34, she was still in NXT. Oh, those dirty, dirty folk. I hope that I'm gonna I'm gonna send you both the link on on Instagram or in your text messages. Where I saw at least three reputable websites list her as four, or before tonight, three and one. Um, I'm hoping that's not the case, but you know how that goes. All right, right. Goldberg, don't be mad anymore at Asuka then, because she lost the Battle Royal too, I think, in NXT. Yeah. So cool your Jets, Billy. Yeah. <laughs> in, my, in, my, in, my heart, in my heart, she's four and up. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, to, to, uh, to compete with your moment of the night, uh, your second moment of the night of, of, of that match could have been when Jade caught Dakota Kai. Off the ropes? No, no, no. For uh, what, What's her finisher? Uh, jaded. Jaded. When she okay. caught her and put her in Jaded, I hated the fact that she caught her, then held her up to proceed to show Walk her around. off. Uh-huh. And then put her in the no. The moment you caught her, that should have just been like, oh yeah, you're done. Boom. Yeah, no doubt. It, it puts more emphasis like you're worried about the other team getting up to get you, and instead it was like, nah, I got this. But yeah. I, I don't know. It depends on how you feel about it. Um, I, listen, I'm all right with this. I hope that they start planning things. Is this a is this a trio that stays together, or do you think you split them up with this draft? And- no, I think this is a trio that that'll slowly fall apart. I think they, this, I think they split them up. Swag, too, this though. swag move that they did and and throwing down a triple threat thing at the end makes me think they're going to stay together because that was kind of like a, I mean that this, I'm minding exactly what they did. They flexed on everybody and then they did this sign right here. So I I, I don't know if that's a thing now. I mean it it might be, but I, I think I think it's a slow burn as to when they decide. All right, 
it's time for us to go our separate ways. And I think it'll start with Jade, who will lead the the way of saying, like, all right, I'm done with y'all. Right, right. What do you think? By summertime? I think by that draft it's over, but I don't know how long you guys think it's I, over. I, I give it to the summer. I give it to the summer. Because I don't think they're going to put them together that much. I think they're going to put them together just enough to keep us wanting to see them. Mm-hmm. But then keep us to the point of like, how long is this really gonna last? I'd be cool with them being in the in you know going to backlash and challenge challenging for the women's tag belts. Okay, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Which might might be the wave that they're gonna have to do here. Um, people are mentioning Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Oh, I think that was about the feud. Yeah, that's a that's a good best friend feud, but that's also an example of a feud that went on way too long. Right. Yeah. With yeah. too many pauses and continuations. Uh, we got Cray also on the Bret Hart train. I'm not a fan of Bill Goldberg, I see. Because- I don't like Bill Goldberg because Bill, Bill, Bill Goldberg ended Bret Hart's career. I think he's reckless. Um, I think he's reckless, and I think that he was given far too much way too soon. Yeah, wait, yeah, yeah. Dakota Kai, bestseller in the women's division. Okay, Dakota Kai for outfit of the night. I see a lot of people were fans of that. I honestly think Dakota Kai's outfit is reminiscent of the Crow. I could be wrong, but I that's what I'm feeling because she I has see that. I can see she that. Has eye paint. Yeah. yeah. I can see that. Listen, they did their thing. I'm looking forward to see what uh happens from all of this because I want to know if damage control, like, are they gonna stick around? Damage control wasn't me and Sean great at Triple H after he was getting like people back and doing things. Damage control did not receive like a great, like, this is what we've seen from them so far, and this is how we feel. Not good. And I'll still argue, not good. They started doing a little bit better with Bailey, and then right. we're right back to not good. Yeah, not good. I, can, can I can I call out a friend of ours, Crystal, uh, for a, a random point she just sent me on Instagram? Go ahead. Shout out to Crystal. Shout out to Crystal, but not for what she's about to what she just said. She said that Samantha. Let me make sure I read this right before I. Right, I put on my Instagram that Samantha Irving is amazing. She's pure gold. Crystal says she's horrible. Oh no, I like her. I, like I, her. I, I think I think Samantha Irvin's doing a heck of a job. Crystal, I, what are you talking about? I've got her in my top three, and I some people don't like my number. Oh, two. Wait, 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 okay. <laughs> Slow down. Slow down. Think, yo, listen. Think about the ring announcers that we've had. Who are your top three ring announcers ever in pro wrestling? And I, we all know who number one is. It's the same as mine. Howard Finkel. Yes. Yeah. Michael Buffer, yes, he's done it. He did. He did it. He did enough in WCW to count. He did enough. The man from Venice Beach. No, he did enough. Wearing he did the enough. orange tights. No, he, <laughs> he did enough. God. He did enough. He did enough. He was not a guest. He did enough. He was. In. People don't realize Buffer was doing WCW stuff from 1993. But let, I digress. So I'm going to go think. Full time announcers, not just main events and. Okay, well, for the sake of me having to think more, which I can't right now, I'm going to say Howard Finkel, Michael Buffer, and David Michael Capetta. Ooh, I do like Capetta a little bit. Capetta's pretty good, but I'm still going to keep my – he's probably top 10. I'll, I'll definitely know that for sure. I got to think, though, for, for more. Who's your – you got a top three? Obviously, number one, yeah. you've already told me. Yeah. Um... And new World Wrestling Federation. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, both competitors' feet must oh. touch the floor. <laughs> go right, right. Our <laughs> Um, the thing. My, my, I, I got. I, I got to give it to my man in AEW. Bro. Justin Roberts. Yeah. See, that's my number two, okay. and a lot of people disagree okay. with me when I say it. Rob will scream at me the moment he hears that. No. No. Uh, <laughs> Yo, and by the way, Sean, I definitely say the same thing you do about Michael Buffer, and I get this. Bruce, he's only a catchphrase. Bruce is better than Michael Buffer. I, I mean, I respect I respect anybody who says Bruce is good, but saying Bruce Michael Buffer. there for day for Michael. Okay, I'm going to say this. Yeah. Who made that comment? Rob. Rob, always Rob shout out to Rob. Buffer. I'll say Bruce is awesome, but I think and and I respect Rob, but saying saying Michael Buffer is overrated, I think, is a really silly thing to say. Respectfully, Michael Buffer is one of the great, but he's a Hall of Fame announcer. 
Yeah, no. Nah, that's like Buffett that's like that. saying that's like saying that Jim Ross was kind of okay on the microphone. <laughs> right. Yo, I there's people who say it though. I know people think Jim Ross is overrated. But so big, big shout out to Rob. Big shout out to Rob. But but my, I mean, Derek, what do you think? Michael Buffer's over. Who you can't say Michael Buffer's I'm, overrated. I'm I'm right. I'm rocking with Michael Buffer. Yeah, Michael Buffer's a Hall of Famer for God's sake. Yo, I, so I'm just saying this. I'm I'm almost ready to put Samantha Irvin at number three, and I oh, like right. a lot of other people. Listen, we're talking over Lillian Garcia. Facts, yeah. like I I am good with a lot of this. Samantha over, Irvin's amazing, but she's not better than Michael Buffer. Take it easy. I just don't count Michael Buffer for wrestling. That's just how I, I just feel like he did the main events. He got to be the cool guy, right? And they uh, called him up. Uh, I, I I would agree. I would say I, I like Samantha Irvin. If if you give me Samantha Irving at like when she is surprised, mm. when she is surprised, she is like top, she's top three. And also, and also, and then we can move on. Don't be a prisoner of the obvious, right? She's also beautiful. She's also very articulate. She's also a singer. She also has an amazing social media presence. Wow. We're talking I didn't know about that singing until this week. I did right. not know she had what, the fight. What, what you got to focus on on a debate like this is literally when she's introducing professional wrestlers. Mm -hmm. That's it. I, listen, and my favorite person for her to announce is in the next match. Okay, let's go. For the Intercontinental Championship. Both competitors' feet. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I just got Howard Fink on the brain. Yo, RIP to the Fink, bro. Legend. Um, Gunther versus Sami Zayn. When she does that, cool, that, like it's it's money every single All right, day. you're marking out a little bit, dude. Let's move on. No, it's great. You don't think that's a great <laughs> announcement for him? Dude, I, see. I, would, I hate that name, number one. You're I the host. Like you just transitioned into a different subject. Be professional. I'm coming back to it. And I want to, I'm going to put some respect on Samantha Irvin's name. So put some respect on that name. I'm I put to some it. respect on her name, brother. Sami Zayn and uh, Gunther here. They were laying it on thick in the beginning with this they one, were. but I expected them to. Sami Zayn's backstage. You get the. I was waiting for the attitude error, like don't, 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 don't. You know the little beat in the background, like your pulse check. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's happening. Oh, my kid's here. My wife's here. We're going to do this. You excited for dad? Music's about to hit. I'm like, okay, this is cool. Good moment. And then he walks through the curtains. He's getting fired up. There's his best friend. Kevin Owens is there. He hugs him. He embraces him. Sammy starts punching stuff going in. I'm like, dude, chill out. I do not need to hear about I tore my shoulder. I broke my hand punching stuff on the way to the ring. He goes out there. He gets his great entrance. I love it. They do it perfectly. He is the underdog from the underground. Sami Zayn selling in this is immaculate. I love it. Yes. Gunther comes out. He, it's not even just him. Ludwig Kaiser does all the little things right, no matter what role he's in. When he handed him the jacket, the brother folded up the jacket fancy so that I was like, I noticed you. Amazing. Uh I hate what's his name now. I still want to call him Fabian Eichner. Is it Giovanni? Giovanni Vinci. Giovanni Vinci. Sean, I hate these name changes, by the way. Right. This was Walter at one point. And now we're like, no, this is Gunther. What do you mean? What right. are you talking about? Oh, right. Walter. Walter and Gouda. <laughs> so, anyway, they go out there and they put on a banger. I love this match. This might be the best match on this card if this, you want to argue it. This, this. Should not have been the best match on it. <laughs> it should have had more competition, maybe I'll say. But this, they deliver. I called it beforehand. I said, this is about to be a great IC title match. Check my Twitter, at EPW Show. Go there. They put on a banger of a match. I love it. Um, I, dude, the match was Gunther beats down Sami Zayn. Power bomb, power bomb, power bomb. Sami finds a way to kick out. Big splash, big splash. He kicks out again. And then right when he thinks he has him, Sammy hits a freaking Ring of Honor style tribute to El Generico, who has retired. He hits a brain buster on the top rope, Sean. And when that happened, the mood changed for me. Instantly, I knew. I was like, oh, no. It's, I knew. I was like, yo. I was like, I told Sean. I was like, if I was betting money on any match that I know I'm going to get right, that's like big time match. I'm like, this is the match this weekend. Brain Buster, they saw me. I'm like, if I bet money, I would have lost it all. They said, they said, I was like, oh no, boot in the corner, donezo, man. It yeah. was done. 
this this was an awesome match. Very, very well done. Sam, Sami Zayn, my guy. That 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 man can sell his butt off and make it all look good. And he, yeah, I, and I felt sorry for him. Like he looked like he was getting crushed by the chops. Sean, I'm coming to you because Sean has a different opinion on this match. This is the one where I said we will defer. So, what did you think of this match? <clears throat> for for the respect, the unlimited respect that I have for for you, Conrad and Derek. I am going to keep this as brief as I possibly can. I don't give a crap about how good the match was. I would venture to agree with 90% of what you guys said. It was a wonderful brain buster onto the top rope. It was a wonderful sell job by Sami Zayn. It was a wonderful job of playing Goliath by Gunter. It was wonderful how Samantha Irving announced both guys. Like, whatever you want to take from the match is perfectly fine with me. You know what's not fine with me? The fact that Sami Zayn was in the match to begin with. You sit up here and you have Sami Zayn, who has already won the Intercontinental Championship, He's had his moment at WrestleMania last year, and you have that guy, that guy, and the most dominant, and everybody knows I like the honky-tonk man, the most dominant intercontinental championship reign in the history of the company. You have Sami Zayn finish a reign that's lasted over 600 days. I'm not going to say the actual number because that number kind of freaks me out for obvious reasons. Look it up if you don't know what number that is. Sami Zayn should have never been in the darn match to begin with. And then he wins. He wins. All the talk that we've had on Clash of the Podcast that you guys doing a wonderful job on Wednesday nights on EPW when you mix in a little WWE with the AEW about the fact that Gunther should hold on to this title until Berlin at the very least. And you have Sami Zayn, who probably, and everybody knows that I think Jey Uso should have been in the match, but even if he didn't want to go that route, I would have taken Chad Gable who, by the way, wasn't even on the damn show. And Sami Zayn climbs the mountain that Jey Uso wasn't able to climb, that Chad Gable wasn't able to climb, that The Miz, I know, whatever, wasn't able to climb, that every mate, that Sheamus wasn't able to climb, that Drew McIntyre, the man who's likely going to be the next World heavyweight champion. He wasn't able to climb. And Sami Zayn gets the job done. It's sickening. I don't give a damn how good the match was. He never should have been in the match to begin with. And if you had to scrap something together because the big guy from Saskatchewan or Minnesota couldn't be here because of some outside the ring stuff, because that probably was the original plan. If you had to scrap it together and Sami Zayn was the best you could come up with, then you should have had Gunther win the match. Because you know what's ironic about the situation, guys? And I'm going to throw it back to you. Brock Lesnar probably wouldn't have won if he was in the match. But Sami Zayn did. It's the stupidest crap of the evening, and it brought the entire quality of the show down. Again, I say I don't care who, how good the match was. He never should have been in the match to begin with. All right. Send all your mail over to uh, Sean Hubbard at Hubbard Wrestling Weekly on that one. And, and I'm, as ser- I'm as serious as a 90-year-old man in cardiac arrest. That's how I'm as serious as serious can be. 
you, you cut me off on your sales pitch here. And you get his merch at Hubbard Wrestling Weekly at threatless.com for those listening on audio. Um, Sean is not fully wrong. I saw a lot of people in the chat saying who they thought deserved it. I, I, I at one point will agree. I thought it was Seamus' time. Okay, not Seamus' time. Then I thought at one point it's Chad Gable's time. I thought maybe they went with Jay Uso on that Monday Night Raw match. There were a lot of people who could have done it. Does Sammy need this? So here's the thing. I feel Sammy's been robbed. I think that this was like robbing Peter to pay Paul type of deal where what you said makes sense. The original plans were Minute Maid Man was going to get a match with Gunther and Sammy was supposed to be facing Drew would be our guess, right? Like non-title match. That's the big match. Sammy's like outlook was on the World Heavyweight Championship. It wasn't here even. So he kind of went backwards and got it done. And that's why I was like, what's him winning? What is his fourth intercontinental title? Third? I think, I think it's fourth. What's the what is this going to do? It did to me, I wouldn't have did it, but maybe this is a whole trap. And, and Chad Gable did appear on screen. I forgot to mention him in the back. He was in one of those cheap looking suits. I don't know what they were doing with him. He just walked up. Hey, how's it going? Remember what we taught you? You know, they were trying to tell a Rocky story, I felt, with this. And yeah, they, they were. I, if you were if you're gonna give Sammy something, I say give him the world title. Sammy did pay his dues in that bloodline storyline for the past year, and I think that's it. It's the I'm yeah. sorry I screwed up with right, yeah. this other thing that you could have been the guy for. And since we have other plans, you're not getting that right now. It was the right. same thing with theory. There's just I think there's just a bad effect of that, Sean. It's like a wheel effect of sorry you didn't get what you were supposed to before, so I'm gonna give it to you now. And now it seems like it may not be the best time for other things. I don't know. Um, where does this lead both gentlemen then in your eyes? Like, is Gunther main event ready now? I think so. Just put him in that main event tier then with Seth and I I I, I think he is ready for the main event uh scene. I would like to give him a somewhat of a, a small hiatus. Nothing too crazy. Just, just some, some, just like a couple weeks off, and then like, you know what? Now I'm back. After the draft, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be there on SmackDown where I'm the solo competitor. <laughs> but I, we make fun of the draft a lot, guys. Uh, I think Gunther's getting a big push. A lot of people are saying if that's the case, it could have even been a Warrior Hogan title versus title concept. They did tease that at one point too that they might do that. Um, Mike says, I'm saying it now, Chad Gable versus Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Championship book it. They could have did that. I would it would it surprise you if they Zack Ryder this Sean tomorrow night or on Monday, excuse me? That's how you I, know. Hope, I hope so, but it never should have happened to begin with. Like I said, well, would it feel like a waste then? Like if you just gave it to Gable this way instead, like yeah, did it. I I, I don't know, Conrad. You, uh, guys, I, I I'll tell you something. Stuff like this bothers me for very serious reasons. And I'm, I'm not going to go there out of respect for time and you guys, but there's a very serious reason why this bothers me. Uh, and, and, and if you think hard enough, because you guys know me, you know what it is. I'm not going to go there tonight, but it's a very serious thing for me because it, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Uh, Rob said this is all Punk's fault, and by that measure, this is all Jack Perry's fault. But all, I, all but they, ruined it. Right. So, so in order to in order to not go there, where I'm saying I'm not going to go, I'm going to deviate and just talk a little bit more about the um, about the brass tax of the title situation. I'll, I'll deviate from my real life uh, theory about this situation, which is why I don't like Triple H at all. But I'll, I'll deviate from that out of respect, and I'll just say, Gunther should have held on to the Intercontinental Championship until Berlin, and it should have been title for title. Touche. I, listen, you know that was my prediction. I did not have Sammy winning this. I didn't think it made sense, but yeah, no, I, and I, I, yeah, I, I, and I and I and I will be sure to talk to you guys off the air about my real reasoning because I'm very I'm real life upset about the Sammy Zayn situation. Okay, we'll we'll discuss more. I know we yeah. discussed a little beforehand. Let's talk yeah. this main event and wrap this up. It was time for the main event. We all know who's in it. It was Bloodline versus Cody and Seth, the hardworking guys versus the bloodline. I don't know what you want to call this. This was uh, the world heavyweight champion and Cody. Blue collar versus white collar. Well, depends on how you look at that, right? Um, so I'm going to tell you guys a funny story. 
So a couple people had started leaving during the entrances for this one. I don't remember the time that someone left, but they were like, all right, I'm going to go home. Home is probably, what would you say, like, like nine, 15 minutes? 15 minutes max. 15 minutes probably to get home. They made it home before Roman Reigns' entrance was finished. He was in the ring, but I was like, how did you make it home before this entrance was done? We called it. We were like, Yo, I bet you can make it home before this entrance is done. Message us when you get upstairs and you're up there. And he messaged us like, I'm home. And we, I was like, yo, this is crazy. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's Yo, that's wild, bro. So these entrances are long as ever. Right. Um, and this one I am going to defer to uh, Sean and others in the chat on this one. I need to hear about these booze more. Like, I don't know how – if I, I want a realistic like number, was it 10, 90, 80, 20, 50, 50? Tell me how bad the booze were because I didn't hear it, but I didn't hear it we but we had a lot of people talking where we True. were and there was True. a bunch of stuff happening. It was it was 50 50. It was 50 50 during the uh the, not when Cody was coming down the aisle. It was 50 50 when Samantha Irving introduced them. It was 50 50 when they were fighting in the ring. It was 50 50 when Rhodey kind of hulked up, for lack of a better term, before he gave the, the attempted the three straight crossroads. The fans were not feeling Cody Rhodes as much as they do on Monday nights. So, yeah, this was weird. This was weird, man. They get their stuff. I call this a classic attitude era match. Yeah. yeah. Starts in the ring. Boom, boom, bam. Let's go to the floor. This is what Rock's matches, even with Cena, I said, this is what it should have been. I didn't need Rock doing cross body blocks off the top rope. I never rock. Rocky Maivia, that stuff wasn't working, bro. Why are you doing that again? I don't want to see this. D oh, arm drag. The Rock doesn't do arm drags. Not more. Rock is there to talk his mess to uh, boom, boom, people's elbow, chair shot to the head. Oh, I'm going to get you for this. The, the million dollar shirt is ripped. The Versace is off. The glasses are off. I'm kind of, pick the Rock's glasses up for me. Thank you. That's what I want to see from the Rock. It doesn't have to be like this extravagant match. That's all I'm saying. You know, the, uh, the Rock had the best chair shot. <laughs> that, was, oh, that was Shane on the Rock. Oh, Catching yeah, yeah, Shane, 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 yeah. <laughs> Roman Reigns misses a spear. Hits the rock at one point with one. The oh, the look right. of anguish in the stare backs. And I'm seeing uh Blake in the chat definitely put that. He thinks that this is going to lead to something tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see. Uh the double pedigrees I thought was super corny. Super corny. Yes. You ready? This is our guy. <laughs> that double pedigree. I was like, I don't care. Yeah. And they both kicked out of those. More I think I think you I think that description of what you just said is part of the reason why the fans started booing them. Yeah, it's just uh, I just didn't like it. Be but but again, it's important to note they booed them during the during the introductions as well. This is we're also in Philly. Let me just say, <laughs> there, keep it. I'm above. just I'm just Philly look, is rough, bro. They threw batteries at Santa, Sean. Santa, bro. What did Santa do? <laughs> no. Nothing. <laughs> Where's that Nintendo you promised me? No, no, I'm, I'm kidding. Philadelphia fans are tough, but I think it was more the point you guys made a second ago, which was it was an attitude era crowd. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and there were there were a lot of people in there too. I, and trust me, I saw Roman and Rock getting booed too. I think it's just a mix of people that there's people who are. No, I, I, I said fifty fifty, bro. Yeah, just weird, very weird. Um, outside, not weird. Everybody... Cody, not weird. Cody is corny. No, no, I'm I'm the about the, everybody is down. Yeah. They get back into the match. Oh, it basically leads to Cody hitting his three things spear, rock bottom, people's elbow, finish. Sorry, Cody, you lose again. Even with mom, yo, the belt shot was like <laughs> it was like the ultimate belt shot that you didn't see coming from someone. <laughs> what I tell you, ah, <laughs> spear. And they got him, bro. He got hit with the WrestleMania 18. I'm sorry, rock bottom people's elbow. Right. What? What is this, Sean? Where are we going with this now? How do you feel about this? This is for you and for Derek and for your wonderful chat to let you guys know that I'm not always the big pessimist. I'm going to say something good for a change. My disgust with the Sami Zayn situation, it turned into a smile with the main event. The main event made the night better. So I will say that I thought the main event was really good. Um, the outcome was very predictable, as we all predicted it correctly on Thursday. But 
the way they got there was pretty cool. So I'll give them credit for a pretty good put together main event. Cody getting booed. I'm, I'm telling. <laughs> I'm telling you. I got a feeling. I got a feeling tomorrow's gonna be a weird night. Something's gonna happen, and I think a lot of people are not gonna like it. I'm just saying tonight. It, listen, WWE can change. We come on, on here tomorrow night and she's oh. smiling and oh. everything. Turn the show off. Oh. I'm ripping up the Cody shirt. I'm done. All the wonderful things in life, the love of a good woman, the the taste of of your mother's home cooking, the smell of a new car, the the the, the feeling of the sun on your skin, all the good things in life. <laughs> will be the feeling that comes over me when we are back here 24 hours from now and Roman Reigns is still the undisputed universal heavyweight champion. I'm, I'm telling you, woo, woo Guys, I don't know how you feel, but I'm telling you, Oh, they better not do it. They better not do it. <laughs> oh, boy. I, I, I brought this comment up real quick from uh, Blake. And he's basically saying, though, that he thinks that Cody is finishing the story and Rock screwing Roman. I don't think Rock screwing Roman. I don't either. I don't I, either. I think Rock is enjoying this. Like, you yes. want to be bad. You've yes. got me bad. Yes. The final oh. boss is here to stay. Now, I think they're going to call up some people. I think tomorrow's match is going to be Attitude Era booking at its finest. There's going to be shenanigans galore yeah. in this matchup. Um, Derek, thoughts on this main event? Uh, real quick, not Cody's story. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's not. Sorry, 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 Whose Blake. story is it if you will? I'm, I'm sorry, Blake. It, it, I, I, and everybody else who believes it's his story, it's not his story. It's his family story. Talk your talk, Derek. He's trying to finish the family story. You got to chill if you will, baby. <laughs> Dusty didn't. He got title shots, didn't win. Cody got titles. No, Cody didn't even get. I don't title think shots. did Dusty ever get a WWF title shot. Like after his, he return? did. He did that. That picture with him with the belt was him winning by DQ. Wasn't it? That was the seventies, though, right? Or maybe yeah, late seventies. Yeah. Did he ever get one as like polka dot Dusty? No. Okay. And Dustin didn't get any title shots in the way and won. This is not Cody's story. This is his family story. He's finishing the story for his family. No disrespect, uh, disrespect, Blake. You you are my guy, but it's not his story. No disrespect to anybody else. It's not his story. Now, on a on a grander scale, I cannot wait. Oh my God, I might go freaking when this man loses. Not on the podcast, folks. <laughs> Not on the podcast. Yo, you two are going to be unbearable tomorrow, Jesse. I will do my best for you, sir, but no promises. I'm, I am praying. Derek, talk. Talk that talk, brother. I'm telling you, man. I there's something. Crazy. There's you Yo, smell that? You there's guys, something in the air. Do you see <laughs> Vinny's comment? I'm kind of agreeing with Vinny of what you guys are saying. Wait, 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 like, wait, wait, every, just look yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. They're not gonna be mad if Roman wins though. It's starting to sound like maybe no WWE. You have, you have to think, bro. If if Cody wins this match, what do you do with Roman? What do you do? He's made, I think, at that point, though. Yeah, he's made, but he's he has made no inkling of a of a sign that he's getting ready to push off. And he is already. I feel like I'm a broken record. He's booked for SummerSlam. He's not going anywhere. Right. If he's booked for SummerSlam, that man is not leaving. I'm not saying you guys are wrong. He might. I'm just saying that Roman is a made man no matter what. At the end of the day, listen, Roman will be back. Roman will have a big match. Listen, listen, all I'm listen, saying is if he's booked you for got, you, look, Listen, you guys have welcomed me. Even though I feel like I'm a part of you guys, you guys technically have welcomed me to your channel on your night. I'm asking you both to do me a favor. And I want you to really mind doing it. Can you do me a favor, guys? 
Can you smell? Just smell that. Oh my god! Just, just. Do you smell some betrayal in the air? Do you smell a swerve? Can I make one joke in case E listens? Yes, go ahead. I, when you said betrayal, I thought you meant all those AEW and WWE videos working together in Philly. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's betrayal when you hang out with people from the other company, apparently. I, I, I'm just, just. Roman's going to win. <laughs> Roman's going to win. I'm telling you, Roman's going to win. Listen, I, I promise you, I promise you. The fact that he is scheduled to wrestle at SummerSlam, I guarantee you, if he loses at if he loses tomorrow, well, today, if he loses today, he is getting that ba- that belt back at SummerSlam. You Cody fans, I love you guys, but this run that you think you're about to have isn't going to last very long. And to piggyback off of what the good gentleman Derek just said, that are the those are the only two options, and the more likely option, because of the streak, is that he doesn't lose it until he's completely ready to leave the scene. Yo, so first off, shout out to Ant because Ant won't stop in the chat. He released a WrestleMania rap yesterday. I shared it on the uh, at EPW on Twitter. Go check him out. Uh, one of my homeboys who raps, love Ant. And um, he said he was there tonight. And I know Nelson, who's also usually in the chat, was there as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I hope it wasn't too cold. That's why Brother Kush did not want to go to this one. I am not big on like, you could get me to go to like, man, they're in Florida. Man, they're in Cali. I'll be like, yeah, it would have been It would have been fine with one of these, brother. Nah, Big Daddy Kush been out there. That New York one, I'll never forget. I was like, never again. (laughs) As I'm sitting there in just a hoodie, I was like, nope. And I think I had a car jacket too. I was freezing that night. Um, Vinny said the main event carried the show. Not bad. Uh, it did. It did. I, I love Con, it. Man. Con, Con, I want you to go into me and Derek gave our diatribes. No, listen, but I'm I'm with Jesse in them. I still think okay. Cody's winning this. Like okay. you, here's my thing. You can but, but Michael. But before you go, I want you to go. I'm just asking, and I'm being funny slash serious. You don't smell that. Oh no, I smell it. Okay. I'm, a little, I'm a little more worried than I was okay. That's last what I'm on Thursday when we did your show. Like, I'm more worried. Okay. So, how do I want to say this? Like, I I think Cody should win because if you do this, Cody has nothing to stand on anymore. If you mm-hmm. beat Cody, I, I'm like, I don't care. Don't don't even don't even let me see him in the final three of the Royal Rumble anymore. I don't care. Right. Dump him out because I don't want to see him at WrestleMania again. Right. How do you make me care about him again after this? Mm-hmm. How do you say, guys, I fooled you twice. Believe me the third time. I, I'm kidding. Believe me the third time. Mm-hmm. It won't work. Like I, I'm out. I'm tapped out myself personally. See, I, I don't I don't think there will be a third time. I think that third, <laughs> I think that third time is realistically going to be him and Seth. Mm. Mm. Look at Cray said should have been rocking Roman. <laughs> should have just been rocking Roman. <laughs> Listen, bro, you know, I called this when I was like, yo, this has gone on for too long. Rock is going to come back and say, you ain't the king of oos. <laughs> I <sighs> dude, I don't know what's gonna happen with this. Listen, we're at the end of this show. Let's wrap this up real quick. Overall grades, like what do you want to give this show right now? Because I-, I wanted to try to come to an agreement. I, I think I already know Derek's answer, and Sean already told you it ain't an A. So I'm rocking with a C plus, bro. I was gonna say B minus for tonight. Sean, C plus, C plus sounds about right to me. All right, looks like I am outweighed in this one. And and, and just to add a little bit of a cherry to the Sunday, in my book, the main event was a B plus. So that should tell you how I felt about the rest of the show. Yeah, no, I think this is a two match. Show for the most part, man. Yeah. It's some good showcases, I'll say. Two, but. Two, yeah. two, I think two, I think Derek hit the nail on the head. I'm going C plus as well. Emily, Emily's agreeing C plus, man. Yeah. Um, we got a big show tomorrow. I'm not even going to run down everything that we have lined up. One more question for you guys before we get out of here. Chat, put your grades in real quick, and I'll try to highlight them or read off some comments real quick. There was a question for us: Was this better than WrestleMania 39 night one? I say no, no, absolutely not. No, okay. I just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page. Yeah. No. James asked that question before from uh, 
the uh, pro wrestler shoot, man. And I just, I don't know. I have Usos and U- Usos and, and and KO and Sammy and and Charlotte versus Rhea. Not even, no way. What up, Deanna? I see Deanna's in here. Appreciate you. Uh, Deanna and I usually agree. She liked the Sammy win. It makes me sick. I, listen, Deanna, uh, me and Derek are rocking with you. Sean, Sean was not having it. No. Sean is not having it. Uh, tomorrow, I'm sure they're going to talk about the, the Hall of Fame. Standard uh, in the Hall of Fame. I, I think tomorrow we'll try to give our thoughts on like maybe some of the stuff we saw. Heyman, uh, Sean's a big boxing aficionado, so we, we'll probably talk a bit about yeah. Muhammad Ali and everybody who was honored that night. Uh, we even got a little tribute to Bray Wyatt that I had seen, but I have not watched the entire thing, honestly speaking. I've only seen clips of Heyman's, and I saw a little bit of U.S. Express. And I kind of want to see some of the other ones, too, if I can get a chance to. Bobo Brazil spoke truth. He spoke a lot of truth, a lot of hard truth. Um, hard truth, hard truth. Bobo Brazil, what was he in a video package? or Bobo Brazil? I mean, not Bobo Brazil. I apologize. Oh, my God. Help me out. Thunderbolt Patterson. Yes. Thunderbolt Patterson spoke a lot of truth. Okay. Yeah. I, for a second, I was confused yeah. on it. Oh, that, I apologize. I meant to say Thunderbolt Patterson. Uh, here's what we got looking forward to for tomorrow. You got AJ Styles, LA Knight. Uh, this could be a sleeper match. And like I said, since they've started doing the two night manias, this might be the first time night two delivers more than night one. Yeah. I think it has the chance to. You got Kevin Owens, Logan Paul, Randy Orton going down. We also have Bailey challenging for the WWE women's title against uh, EO Sky. And we also have, I almost called her an old name. Stop changing people's names, WWE. Seth Rollins. Drew McIntyre, is Seth going to be easy pickings for Drew? Drew sure seems to think that. He's going to be easy pickings, but not for Drew. And the bloodline will be around. We did not see Solo tonight. Maybe we see him later. Do they have another trick up their sleeve? Will Cena and Austin show up? Who knows? Tomorrow is chaos. Sean and Derek, I'm not going to lie. These guys got me shaking in my boots a little bit here. I was, I'm pretty I, – listen, I'm sticking with my Cody pick. I can't change it. But Sean and Derek are making sense. I'm telling you, there's two options. Either Cody does not win this title today, <laughs> or he wins the title and loses it right back. Here goes at Mike. SummerSlam. Join us, Sean, the fine taste of wine. <laughs> there you go. Vinny <laughs> said C. Plus. Deanna said As night one go. last year was better. <laughs> As they go. The smell of morning breath in the no. morning. <laughs> no, what I'm, what I'm smelling smells like the sweet smell of betrayal. Uh, Blake says A plus grade for me. You are enjoying this show, sir. Oh, I, I respect it, Blake. I respect mm-hmm. it. Sammy wins equals Rocky. A lot of people are comparing that. Yeah, that's that. probably true. Yo, shout out to my guy Kev on Twitter saying Europe was good, yeah. bro. What up, mm-hmm. Uh, JoJo says now if that happens, the Cody crybabies will riot. <laughs> or uh, Mike, excuse me. Let them riot. Matt, my Matt Lopez M. Lizzy says night two can't do any worse. That's true. Mike says Punk will be involved. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Listen, if I, I promise you, I promise you, if night two or so, if Cody, I, I the reason why I have this issue with Cody winning. Keep talking, Derek. Keep talking. Tonight is the fact that it has been stated by Sean and other people that there have been boos for Cody. <laughs> Philadelphia is not feeling it, bro. <laughs> Philadelphia is not feeling it, bro. They are not feeling Soak it, it in! Soak <laughs> it in! I promise you, Philly, Philly will probably riot if Cody wins. Now, if this, this is, is somewhere gonna be, else, this, is gonna this gonna might be, be a different story. Who, whose story would that be? That, oh, if, <laughs> wait, if it's... I'm, mess, I'm messing with wait, you. Wait, wait, in Philly? It might be Philly story. <laughs> All those, all those little punk kids with the Cody t-shirts crying their eyes out. <laughs> this is going to be fantastic. <laughs> I, oh my God. I promise you, dude. <laughs> this you is going to be great. Here. Do you, you see the here. unbridled joy in my face? This mm-hmm. is heel showing coming up. Smell it again. I mean, honestly, theoretically, Co- Cody owes me. For what? He shouldn't have, he shouldn't even be here. <laughs> Blake is asking. Derek. He shouldn't even be here. Hold Take on. your p- 
punk behind back to AEW and pick up the sledgehammer that you used to break oh. Triple H's throat in the first place. Here that's, we go. that's why I was pissed in the beginning. Like This has been a plan really from the really? start. Talk that talk, Derek. It's been that's a plan from the start. That's what I'm saying. Like when you when you debuted at AEW, wrestling has more than one <laughs> royal family. Then you have Triple H's throne right there. You take the sledgehammer, crush it. Now all of a sudden, you booked yourself in the corner. You can't get a title shot. Hey, uh, good old Triple H, I need you real quick. Okay, oh, let, let me all the Cody crybabies crying their stinking eyes out. <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be fantastic. Let me wrap, <laughs> let me wrap this up nicely for people. Oh BJ said just hopping in to uh, uh drop a like and like say I appreciate, appreciate y'all. I'll be in the live, live chat tomorrow. tomorrow. I hope you are well. Thank you, BJ. Thank you, BJ. Enjoy some of this aroma that's that's floating around. Oh this is hurt. fantastic. Conrad, you better jump on the bandwagon. It's gonna have Derek Derek and I have accepted reality. Philly told you how they feel tonight. Cody is going to lose tomorrow night. Oh, oh my God. Listen, I want y'all to come back and rock with us tomorrow. I'm getting feedback from somewhere. I don't know where. Maybe it's me. I want y'all to come back and make sure you rock with us tomorrow. Night two, we're going to be talking about it. I don't know if Roman's going to get the win. Talk that talk. Get at us on at EPW Show and Hubbard Wrestling Weekly and DS Elite One. Derek ain't going to answer you. Know, he don't check that. So <laughs> hit me, hit me on, hit me on Instagram. I, I check that a lot. But by, by, by the way, what's what's your tagline when you guys sign off on Wednesday nights? What? Oh. <laughs> oh. We're going to leave this where it is. You leave me your thoughts, comments down below. Yeah. We'll see what happens tomorrow. I'm sticking with Cody. These two are laughing to the bank. And you'll know from the instant reaction. When the video says live and you see people either laughing, smiling, or crying, you'll know who won. For myself, for my guest, the guy next to me, co-host of Clash of the Podcast, Sean Hubbard, every single Monday live at 6.05. For the man they call Derek, we'll be back. Wednesday night's AEW Dynamite review, but we'll all three of us will be back tomorrow for your WrestleMania 40 night two review. We're gonna put this one in the books before me and Cla me and Sean get ready for Clash of the Podcast episode 84 this Monday. We are out for this episode. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the podcast. One. I hope y'all are wrong.